Welcome to Aorta Ultrasound for the MS3 Family Medicine Clerkship. We're going to go over some basics of Aorta Ultrasound at the bedside, as well as review a couple of cases. So there's really only one question that you're asking yourself when you're ultrasounding the aorta at the bedside. You want to know, is there an aneurysm? Now, an abdominal aortic aneurysm is defined as an aorta measuring greater than 3 centimeters, although we tend to get more concerned when they're greater than 5. Just to review, you have a picture of your aorta here on the left, and you want to make sure to scan from the proximal aorta to the distal aorta where the aorta is bifurcating into your iliacs. This is because 95% of abdominal aortic aneurysms are infrarenal. Now you're going to use either your curvilinear probe or your phased array probe for this. Now the key to identifying the aorta is to first locate the vertebral body, which can be seen at the bottom of both of these ultrasound images, and it appears as an upside down horseshoe. Now the aorta is going to be just above the vertebral body on the right of the screen. A lot of the times it will be pulsatile, and then next to it on the left will be your inferior vena cava. In its most proximal location, it may have kind of a double pulsatile look um, as it's getting reverberations from the heart and the aorta next to it. Now you're going to scan all the way to the distal aorta, and you'll know you're there when you see it bifurcate into the internal iliacs, which can be seen on the right. Measuring the aorta is really important. You want to make sure to measure it correctly, which is from outer wall to outer wall. Measuring it from outer wall to outer wall will make sure to include any thrombus as seen in this image here. So if you see the arrow on the right, the blue arrow, you'll see that that's indicating the thrombus. Now kind of this yellowish line indicates outer wall to outer wall, which is measuring 6.6 .6 centimeters. So that does indeed say that there is an aneurysm present. Now if you were to mistakenly measure inner wall to inner wall, you would be measuring the orange arrow there, which would be under measuring the aorta. Now just to be familiar with this, this is an example of an aortic dissection. You can see the flap there in the center of the aorta. It's really important to understand that ultrasound does not rule out dissection. However, if you see this on the ultrasound image, you should be aware of what it is. So just a few quick pearls. The bedside ultrasound identifies an enlarged aorta. It does not identify a leak, a rupture, or a dissection. Now less than 50% of patients with a ruptured AAA are going to have your classic symptoms of acute onset back pain, abdominal pain, and a pulsatile mass. So you just need to make sure to keep your differential nice and broad. An abdominal aortic aneurysm is defined as an aorta measuring greater than 3 centimeters although greater than 5 is when we refer someone for repair. It's nice to know that the AAA enlarges 2 to 8 millimeters per year. Larger the AAA, the greater the risk of rupture, and elective repairs have a lower mortality than a ruptured AAA. And again, 95% of all AAAs are infrarenal, so that's why it's important to make sure to scan the entire aorta. So here's our case. This is a 78-year-old man. He's coming into your clinic with acute back pain. He feels kind of nauseated, no trauma, no falls, otherwise no complaints. He has a history of hypertension. He's a long-time tobacco smoker. His vitals are pertinent for a heart rate of 98 and blood pressure 195 over 88. Your exam, he appears to be in pain. He has some diffuse abdominal tenderness, but a normal back exam. So acute causes of back pain in older patients can include a AAA with a rupture and or an aortic dissection. So here's our ultrasound of this patient. Now you can see this is kind of difficult to identify the aorta on this ultrasound. This is pretty common. So again, first locate your vertebral body and then you can kind of begin to see your aorta to the right just above the vertebral body. Now, if you were to measure this from outer wall to outer wall, you would get a measurement of about 2 centimeters. So there is no AAA present. 
However, there could still be a dissection and the patient needs to be worked up further. Now case two, we have a 65 year old gentleman who's forced to come into the clinic by his wife. She's concerned because he has known high blood pressure, which he doesn't take any medications for, and he never sees the doctor. He does have a smoking history of greater than two packs per day for 40 years, but he has no physical complaints. Now let's quickly go over the screening recommendations for AAAs as set out by the Preventative Task Force. So they recommend men 65 to 75 with a smoking history or men 55 to 75 with a family history be screened for a AAA. Whereas women, they need to have both a smoking and a family history and be between the ages of 55 and 75. So if we remember our patient, he's a 65 year old gentleman, he's hypertensive and he has a long standing smoking history and he never wants to see the doctor. So you could quickly at the bedside do your own screening exam in order to determine whether or not he has an aneurysm. So this is what you see when you do your ultrasound. Now first you locate the vertebral body, then you identify the aorta, you measure from outer wall to outer wall, and you get a measurement of six centimeters, and you can see a large thrombus. Now this was really useful because you were probably not gonna be able to get that patient to get his ultrasound. And this way you can tell him he has an aneurysm, describe to him what the risks are of rupture and make sure he gets urgent referral to a vascular surgeon. So in summary, this is an easy, non-invasive, dynamic bedside test with life-saving consequences, but you need to know its limitations. It does not exclude dissections, and it does not necessarily detect ruptures or leaks. Thank you.